Yeah. Yeah. Guess who came back with a large fucking fist to eat the Brooklyn Blast Furnace? I brought your ugly bitch with me. Your shit is sus. Ain't nobody trying to hear you talk. When Jimmy's on the mic, they take your wax shit and turn it off. It's real life, not them stories that you punks say. He made it out alive, and he's relatively unscathed. So subscribe to the podcast and share the post. And tell your super friends to do the same. You heard it here from Coast. Another episode of the Brooklyn Blast Furnace with somebody I never thought that I would even get on here. Honestly, I don't know why. I don't know. And uh, but look, here he is in the flesh, cousin Joe. What's my up? Man. What's up? What's up, Jimmy? Man, long time no talk, brother. Long time no talk. I was kind of out of the loop a little bit. I had some personal things that I need to take care of. Cut I'm some, scared. cut some cancer out of my life, and situate, get some, get some things in order, and. Uh, oh. God bless. You know, re- 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 resolve nonsensical little stupid issues. And uh, yeah, I'm back you to some look degree. Good. You look good. Thanks. Well, actually, unfortunately, I would usually be wearing a hat, but. That hair, you can't got good hair today. I do. I have nice hair. I, yeah, I have good hair. I don't even want to. You got, I, mean, I got the solo panel. I can't rock that hair. You, you got, got a solo, you got the solo panel? Nice. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a I, gal called. Gal called it the solo panel. <laughs> Well, the reason why my hair, I usually wear a hat when I'm on these things, but I was like, you know what? Because I just came from our friend Eddie Leeway's wake. and Rest in peace, uh, Eddie. Rest in peace, Eddie. And here's his little mascot. And, and it, bro, it's one of the hardest things ever. On the back of his mascot, it doesn't have like a regular prayer or whatever. There's the, right. lyric, the lyrics to Kingpin. Oh wow! Who did those? I don't know, but it has the wow. funeral. It, it, the lyrics to Kingpin are on the back of his man's car. It, it makes sense. Eh? It really does. Yeah, they had they had leeway playing low in the funeral home. <laughs> That's beautiful. I'm like, this is incredible. So God yeah, bless, man. yeah, God, God bless. bless um, yeah, I knew him for a very, very, very long time. I met him in '92, and we, you know, I had issues. He had issues. You know, whatever. But we always. Since 92, some time would pass a little bit, but we would always have each other's number. We would always keep in contact. And I have nothing but good things to say about Eddie Lee. Yeah, me, me too, man. I mean, Eddie and I, we had our relationship. It uh, wasn't bad. wasn't, I mean, it wasn't bad. It was good. Um, I always respect him. I respect all my elders in the hardcore scene. Yep. No matter what, I, I, I acknowledge their contribution, contributions. And he definitely, he was a unique individual, like many of the people were blessed to be associated with. I mean, we would come from a real unique world. The underground hardcore punk scene, I really will never not give thanks to it, man. Meeting right. people like Eddie and, uh, I mean, him particularly, he was a unique individual. As some people say, what, he's like the, like the, the, the uh, missing Beastie Boy or whatever. Yeah. Like that. yeah. I mean, listen, growing up hearing that song, it's just like, man, you can't top it. That yeah. band was amazing. I kind of never saw them in their heyday, I'll be honest, but uh, I was happy enough to see them when he was singing again. And his voice, when he first started singing again, his voice was a little off because he was just rusty. But once he got back into like voice shape, because listen, let's be real. He's not like a hardcore singer. No, no. So he's like, you know, he's. it's a lot easier. Like, ah, he had to yeah. fucking sing. Yeah, <laughs> so, man. God bless, man. Much respect to Leeway, and they changed the game. We could all admit that. People around the world, you see all those people around the world thanking him? I mean, yeah, it's crazy. beautiful, Jimmy. Yeah, man, yeah. I, I grew up as, like, a metalhead and stuff, and I went to Lemoore's to go see Suicidal in 1980, 1990, awesome. and it was White Zombie, Leeway, Suicidal, and I had I had heard of Leeway. Right. I never heard a note. I seen them on flyers. White Zombie were a bunch of dirtbags in a van at the time. <laughs> and Lee- Leeway came on and they fucking blew me away, bro. And then the next day I bought Born to Expire and the guy was like, yo, if you like this, then he is this. And, get- and sold me Agnostic Front, Liberty and Justice. Oh, shit. That's how that happened? That's oh. how it happened. So, cool. so, so I give a lot of respect to Eddie because he's the one that pointed me in this direction. That's awesome. I love shit yeah. like that. I love. Yeah. I, I mean, I love that. It's awesome, man. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, how you been doing? You've been. A, you've had a very uh, a eventful last several days, no? <laughs> yeah, man. Um, fuck, dude. I I can't tell you. I mean, I'm my my floor down. I'm in my office in my basement. 
I think the floor has like got like scuff marks on it from pacing back and forth for four days on the phone. Yeah, and it's been really rough. Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, I don't know how much you want to ex. I'll only just cut to the chase. Basically, the sure. city, uh, the parks department, and the mayor's office have had it out for us since we did that show during the pandemic when everybody uh, was supposed to be dead. And um, yeah. we, um, it's really, it's really, it's really just sad how corrupt things are and i really entered the belly of the beast when i put myself out there like that um it changed my life that whole thing i learned a lot about people and how they really are in real life yeah uh but they still have a just a discrimination against us and they are it's not even just me i found out there's other things but making they tried to basically pull the plug on us and then they tried to have like a meeting where they made us say we could jump all these loopholes, but also like, we're not gonna make any promises. So we had to make a decision that of course, they did this like oh, 10 days before the show. They could have did this a month ago. Right. And, and it's obvious, we know for a fact, there are people that are involved with the city parks department because what happened to me, I mean, put it this way. One of the stipulations that I was hearing being floated around was that they were gonna ask me to sign a piece of paper stating I won't follow through with my lawsuit, which I'll tell you about. Uh, if we were going to do the show. So basically when they lied and said that I scammed 9-11, which my uncle and family was picking up body parts and they put, I got put on inside edition with burning buildings. They yeah. didn't want me to be mad and sue about that lie. So they were going to try since I think they realized that that couldn't happen because of the situation with a popular guy like Jesse. Right. So they reneged on it and we had to make a decision. What are we going to do? We can't wait and take a chance. The, the reason why they're saying they're withholding the permit was bull. We knew it, but we didn't have time to fight it really. Right. Um, so we, we had we did a conference call with the mayor's office, the ah. city parks department, NYPD. And there was like 13 people on this call. And I was just like, oh, they're like, we want to make the show happen. We care about Jesse. Well, that's bullshit because if they, bullshit. About, if they cared about Jesse, we had enough time. We would have done anything they wanted that was reasonable. Right. And they didn't want that to happen. So we thank God, uh, coincidentally, meant to be. Maybe 10 days ago, uh, Irving Plaza had a show on a Friday that the tickets didn't sell. They dropped the show. So we actually got lucky. They had the date open. And Talk about perfect fucking time. I'm bro. telling you, but to make that happen with a place like Live Nation, thank God we have guys in, involved like Adam or Christian McKnight, uh, guys, Mike C, guys that have been involved in the Lower East Side, venue owners. These guys are like guys from downtown that became, you know, just self-made businessmen. Yeah. Uh, they everyone loves Jesse, man. He's like indigenous to the neighborhood, so it was really meant to be like Voltron. Uh, myself, yeah. I had never met Jesse's manager Dave until recently, and I feel like I know him ten years. But I mean, I had, I told you, eighty-one missed voicemails. Eighty-one, insane. I mean, and that, I don't. I check my voicemails. I run yeah. my own business, so I can't leave voicemails on on listen to whatever. So. We got really lucky, man. It sucks. It breaks my heart because that park is important to uh, really the people, but hardcore and punk, it's a protest park. Yeah. But it's it's definitely bigger than me. Uh, I'm not going to act like it's about me only. Um, put it this way. Uh, the parks department is not allowing people to do shows in the parks anymore unless it's through the city. They don't want us having a voice uh, the Rock Against Racism show event guy who had the permit for uh, Washington Square Park. They confiscated the permit, threatened the guy that if the politicians couldn't get involved with the with the with the date, they were going to revoke his pass. I got confronted to do a like a rogue roll up protest show. Chris asked me to do it, and I was like, Chris, I've been through a lot. I think yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wasn't ready to use my resources because I, I have people that like really give me good deals on the on the stage and the and the PA. And he went on his own. He was like, let me try to apply for a permit with the parks department for, for Washington Square Park. So he applied for a permit. They told him all the, they told him all the dates in May were, were taken. Now, so he filed a FOIA request, which is the Freedom of Information request. Right. Come to find that no dates were taken in May. They were lying. Fuck so this is, this, is, this is what we're up against. We're up against, uh, uh, we pay these people. Yeah. The park like Cheshire Tompkins, watch it. It's a their protest park. They're supposed yeah. to be ours. We pay these people and they are they lie to us. 
yeah. where we have to file a paperwork that an attorney has to take responsibility for. And if the attorney doesn't tell us the truth, he can lose his, his law practice license. Right. So the guy had to tell her, the lady, whoever in the parks department, this lady, I think it's this lady, I won't mention her name, I don't want to get do that yet. Right, yeah, you don't need she, to. She, he told her that we have to get, so they got the date. So they were able to lie. So we're dealing with people that will lie, cheat, and are discriminating against people that they don't like. For what? You yeah, know what? I was gonna say, like, what the fuck? Like, you can't have like a public gathering. You're paying your permits, but they want to jerk everybody off. Like, I don't understand the fucking. You had to hear the conversation on on the um, conference call. Of course, I'm not like talking because I want to let the let the attorney talk and only sure answer yeah, yeah, yeah. questions. And these people that they hire, they're just really clueless because they were acting as if there was never been a show in Tompkins Square Park where there was more than 200 people. I'm like, there's 300 migrants in the park right now. Yeah, right so, now. So, so I'm, just, <laughs> I'm like, you know, and listen, we've done the show since 2018. Jimmy, we never had one 911 call. Right. We never had anyone get hot and hurt. The, 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 we clean up the park. Listen, anyone who's been to that show, they know what it's about. Community, love. It's probably one of the most authentic, diverse New York shows to date, events that happen. Sure. So the, the fact that they could lie and say, oh, we really care about Jesse. No, you don't. Because no. if you wanted to, they could have, they have the ability to uh, expedite. Sure. Anything they want. They can do whatever, whatever the fuck they want to do. They just whatever, make... we, whatever we wanted to do to make it happen for Jesse, we would have. But they wanted to make us wait till today to have a conversation to tell us maybe Thursday. Really? Like two so, days before? Yeah, I'm telling you. So it was. It's sad. It's frustrating. The park. They've been messing with us. Last year we had the park date. I announced the show. Chris gets these dates for months. I announced the show was black and blue. Two days after they had, I announced it, someone must know it's me. He gets a call and they said, oh, sorry, we gave you the wrong date by accident. Uh, like, uh, yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, like, so they, gave, they, they, they got it out for you. They have a hard on for you because you were like basically fuck you during the fucking call. Yeah, I feel it right here. The hard on, it's right there. It's right yeah, there. it's on your seat. It's right, I'm trying to get in my ass. That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. anyway, but listen, Jesse Mallon, man, I mean, I can't tell you, he has made me feel like uh when i when i go downtown and i meet people uh you know that work in restaurants and bars i mean a lot of reasons why i get respect is because of him you know really treating me like family and i've always, we've always looked out for uh his staff we're we're a family so yeah. we know how we do even with drew with, with bowery electric we yeah. all which we, we were we're People could say what they want, and usually it's always people who have no idea about how we're this bad group of people. Right. But when you're around us and our community, and there's some pretty rough guys. We yeah, come sure. hang out with us. It's of all love. Everyone. It's all yeah. love, you know. Yeah. So Jesse, um, you know, it's it's really uh, you know it's unfortunate what happened to him, and and uh, you know I've had my conversations. And we've actually shed tears together on the phone, but I, I really think that the Lower East Side would not be what it is without him. Right. I mean, yeah. Coney Island High, he was degenerate. This his list. Yeah. You know, Niagara. Was, and then where was that play? Where was that spot downstairs? Me, you, and Jimmy G were there one night with a bunch of people. Berlin. Berlin, yeah. I mean, he's got partners. He's involved with places people don't even know about. He's listen, yeah. he's, he's a talented musician. Listen, let me just say this to people, okay? Jesse, uh, we were supposed to go to dinner that night when that all happened, when I couldn't make it, but like maybe like maybe two months ago, three months ago, he's going through what he's going through. He hits me up. He's like, I read his text message. I'm like, he asked me if he, if I could help put together a benefit for somebody. I went, uh, is this guy really, he's in a, this is what kind of human he yeah. is. He's yeah. in a situation like he is and he wants to help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. So me and Jimmy, well, I called Jimmy. I got chills. And he, uh, we both called Jesse. And we're like, Jesse, we want to jump through the phone and choke you. Because like, what are you <laughs> yeah. we're going to we're going to do a benefit. We're going to do it for you. Come on. And he was yeah. obviously like, oh, man, no. And of course, listen, he's that kind of guy. You know, yeah. he's like, he'll help anybody. Yeah. Um, it's really amazing, man, how this all came about. It's a bummer yeah. that they decided to take the park away from us because the weather looks nice. Yeah. I probably I don't want to waste my energy on what I really want to say to them. Right. The park's part in the mayor's office, but I think, yeah. you know, it's obvious that uh, it's unfair what they're doing to people. And if they're lying to people about expressing their emotions in public parks, it should be a red flag for people to see that this is really not right. What's going on? Um, they try Think about parks and people getting permits, the energy, the community trying to voice that and putting their, their, their creativity into the neighborhood of New York City. 
It's yeah. like if that's happening, those days are over. You're yeah. you're part of it's you know not to get like that word scares people. It's like a tyrannical or or, or a very fucking crazy. It is. Thing. It so, is. I mean, how we're coming to a point where they're lying to people about getting permits. Yeah. And, it's, and they're allowed. That's the crazy part. They're allowed to lie to you if you yeah. file a, a FOIA request. Then they got to tell you the truth. Like right. really. That's what yeah. it's come to. So, yeah. but uh, this Friday night, listen, Irving Plaza, I can't tell you, Eugene from Go Go Bordello, Freddie Mabel, Jimmy, yeah. um, the Capturers, everyone, Warmonger, War, War, War Orphan is. Oh, is and then you, and you, you, you added another one, Crazy in the Brains. Well, so that was something, because listen, everyone scrambled to try to make it work. Eugene had something planned at the old Brownies slash Hi Fi slash. Coney Island baby slash it's called heavy can wait. He had had an event there and I think his girl was playing and another band. So I guess he was, he felt bad. He's like, Hey, if we could have them play. So our incentive was like, yeah, put your girl on stage at urban plaza. Why not? So uh, everybody's happy, dude. I can't wait. Obviously the park is bigger than what, than Ritz, than the Ritz, what's the uh, urban plaza. Plaza. But um, I can't tell you what, Irving did for us to make this show happen as far as like getting the cost down for us to help make money for Jesse. Yeah. You know, Jesse is currently, you know, getting in America. Um, basically they would leave you just, just to rot. Of course. Uh, so he's, you know, obviously very loved. Uh, friends of his have relocated him to an area. I don't want to say, but right. where he's getting therapy at least a couple of days a week. And right. I think he's, I think he's getting his own stem cell treatment, which to me is awesome because that's something that I hear good things about, you yeah. know? Yeah. And, uh, I mean, Jesse is so helpful. I, I don't see this being the last benefit for him. I think that you're going to see a string of bigger events okay. because he deserves it. So it's been a lot. Good. It's been a lot, dude. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, it, it, it's crazy how, I mean, it's awesome how everything fell into place like that. You know, what are the chances that that, that a show, you know, the day before the park show had to get canceled at Urban Plaza? That's- There's a date available. Oh, come on. Yeah. You know, I was like, yeah. uh, in, in April in, in, uh, on a Friday, I was like... I, yeah, it was meant to be. Yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, so people can come Saturday, uh, Friday, six o'clock. There's little things that go on, like we because of the donations and tick that they have other things going on where we can only allow tickets at the door to be kind of like donation tickets. Right. So people need to show up early to yeah. get there. Um, obviously, we're going to get in as many people as we can. If you're already donated online, um, you could bring your donation receipt. With yeah. your ID, and that'll be okay, like a ticket. You know, we're, we'd like people to, to donate at least 20 bucks. Yeah, of course. You know, but, but that's a uh, minimum. I mean, you throw it at least. It's, yeah, I mean, the guy has done so much. I mean, he's the guy, he contacted me to do the first Bowery Electric matinee show, hardcore show. And he, he obviously, I couldn't commit to it because it was hard to do because uh, I had kids eventually and stuff. But he was, he wanted me to do like a weekly matinee. I was like, I can't do it. And then he said a monthly I couldn't really do. It was hard. But yeah. and I'm glad Drew is there doing it. That's yeah. awesome. You know, Drew does good stuff. So, uh, but listen, anyone uh, who's been involved in New York City, uh, behind, and maybe they don't know Jesse, but he contributed to the punk and hardcore scene more than most people know. So. Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, yeah. I can't wait. It's gonna be a beautiful day. So. Yeah, be awesome. Be fucking awesome. And what will be yeah. beautiful is that if it just winds up having a fucking rain on Saturday, so you know you fucking it was really well, fucking the right thing. I, I thought someone mentioned there was some rain, but w- whatever. Yeah, we'll see. You know. So yeah, that's fucking awesome. And then, yeah. and then we'll, we'll we'll fast forward to fucking. You got fucking black and blue weekend is fucking ridiculous, bro. Yeah. Bro. Uh, what? Yeah. How many? It was the Super Bowl of Hardcore, and then what was the first show that was the... 2006, was that the first, quote-unquote, Black and Blue Bowl? I think it was 2006. I got the... Yeah, I, I, yeah you... Yeah. Club, Club Spirit. Yes. Um, no, Club Spirit. Yeah, Club, Club, yeah, Club Spirit was with uh, the Indecision, Crown of Thorns, District 9, right? V.O.B., Underdog, yeah, Stop the Ground, Murphy's yes. Yeah. 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 Tuesday yes. Device. Yes, doing yeah. data bikes. Holy yeah. shit. Yes. District yeah. 9. Yeah, I was there. I was there. Yeah. I remember that show because I was sleeping. I was living in an apartment. I was in a basement apartment sleeping. My phone was blowing up. And someone's like, yo, cuz, put on the news. The club got raided like a week before. For like, <laughs> yeah, there was like, they had these crazy parties. There were a lot of drugs. They got raided and the doors were locked. So I fucking panicked. And I want to say Chris Love, who does all the old raves and stuff, I think he was my hookup. So he got, he felt bad. He's like, 
come get me, pick me up. We're going to drive there and go meet the guy. He told me that you're going to be good. I went to the fucking place bugging out. I was like, yo, the show, the show was in like four days. Yeah. And somehow, some way, they got the shit cleared up. The doors open. Yeah. Sure. So I was, that almost shit. That was a cool, that was when, who owned the club Crowbar across the street? Jay-Z or, or uh, some hip hop dude. Either way, that was, that was a sick place. That's what, God rest his soul. Little Greg climbed. Yeah. On the fucking pipes. Yo, fucking rest in peace, little Greg, man. That can't be something that, yeah. No, I got chills. I got chills. No, he walked out the door and I was like, he looked at me and he looked at the pipe. He went like this because we, you know, and I went like this, went. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I didn't see anything. Yo, he he was 30 feet in the air. Yeah, a fucking little monkey. Yo, amazing. That fucking dude, man. Much respect, little Greg. But that was that was an amazing show, dude. Yeah, I remember that shit. No, it sucks. There's like no footage anywhere. Really? Try to find you probably find it. But I could have sworn there's like no footage anywhere of that show. There's like a couple, like indecision, it's like rough and grainy. There's no yeah. good footage of that show. It's crazy. Yeah, like, that's fucked up. It and must then, be yeah. real, real strict with our no camera uh, stuff. Yeah, something. And then even back then though, like we didn't have smartphones like we did. It would be like a flip phone video. That's so weird, right? It's yeah. fucking weird that you think about that now. Yeah, it's true. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah, that, was, yeah. So that, was, that was the year we switched the name. So fucking A, man. Here we are. Yeah. It's like, and then yeah. you saw, yeah, yeah, it's, that's, it's wild. 2024, babe. Yeah, man. And then, yeah, yeah, yeah. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, May 18th weekend. Yeah, that's, uh, I have a little, uh, I have the flyer over here. So you got, what's crazy is that it's 40 years of victim in pain. Oh, my God. I saw Vinny this, I saw Vinny earlier this afternoon. It's fucking, I look at Vinny and you just, you just got to smile. You know oh, what I mean? God, he's just so, he's so amazing. Yeah. I can't believe it. Like I just, uh, Vinny, I, 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 it was his birthday not too long ago, and I called him up, and I'm like, I was just, I had a, I had a day uh, off of work, and it was his birthday that day, maybe. I think it was on his birthday, maybe. And uh, I was like, uh, Vinny, what are you doing? He's like, Nah, cuz, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm gonna come pick you up. I'm gonna grab some food for your birthday. He's like, Oh, what are you in the city? I was like, oh, I'm going to come pick you up. I want to take you out for your birthday. So I was like, I called Gallo. I didn't want to make a big deal. I called Gallo. Gallo's going to meet me. So I said, uh, you know, I'm going to bring him. So I got a text from Frank Chop Shop. I guess he must have knew I was picking up Vinny. I must have sent, I sent the post. I put a post up about going hang out with Vinny just, just to get people like into it. And he was like, oh, come get haircuts. Frank, Mike, Mike Frank from, from Frank Chop Shop. Yeah. And uh, my kids screaming upstairs. And uh, basically, he, I said, Vinny, I'm like, you want to get a haircut? So he's like, he's like, um, uh, cuz I'm with you, whatever you want to do. So yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, do you need a haircut? He's like, I'm with you, you know? So yeah. basically I call Mike, he sets it up both for appointments. I go to Vinny's house. I walk in the door. He just got a haircut. Yeah. <laughs> like Vinny, I just told you we don't get haircuts. He's like, oh, okay. So I had to call Mike and tell me, I'm like, is, communicating with him sometimes is like talking to like your, like your older like relatives. Yeah, yeah. So hilarious. Just, I'm like, my, meanwhile, Mike Frank just rearranged, rearranged, um, rearranged the whole retailer. They rearranged the whole meeting for him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, if you have a phone call, I can always pause this. It'll be like, no. like nothing, you know, nothing happened. It's, uh, no, it's all right. I'm just going to send this right now. Are you going to pause it right now? Really? Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I, I saw Vinny. I went to a. I was down a generation a couple weeks ago when when uh, Danny Maradino came in from Northside King. Yeah, yeah, awesome. So, yeah, I, I was there and I was bullshit with him. And then he, him walks Gallo and Stigma and stuff. And a little while later, we all go out to eat. So the conversation is just. We started talking about mafia shit. I don't know. Yeah. And then we were talking about how the Fountain Avenue dump. Used to be a dumping ground from Roy DeMeo and this and that and the other thing. And then he's like, I'm like, yeah, it was across the street from Starrett City. And then Vinny, it's, it was just like, what the fuck? He's Vinny, like, hold, hold on a second. Hold, yeah. I got to tell you the story. I just forgot. So he, hold on real quick, though. He goes, he goes, he goes, Starrett City. He's like, he's like, that place is a dump, too. He's like, you know, not too long ago, they tried to sell me an apartment there. And I was like, I don't understand. And I found out they got Legionnaire's disease and staring. I'm like, what? 
And then Gallo with his laugh just starts fucking laughing. And they like, say, oh, I'm going to do the podcast again with me and Gallo. And Gallo's like, yeah, we'll talk about the disease. He's like, yeah, the Legionnaires. They got that in oh my City. God. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is that? So someone from Stanford City called you to try to sell you an apartment? Like, it was fucking hilarious. Yo, listen, that's that's Vinny. Yeah, cartoon character. character. Vinny is a cartoon character. He's He 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 is so deeply rooted in the city yeah. of New York. His father. Yeah, he grew up right across from Murder, Inc., right? So, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yo, so, so we went to his house. You know, he actually walks us out the door. And we walk towards, we walk towards Lombardi's. And he like, it's like we're on a tour. So he's like, take a walk with me. Yeah. We walk into St. Patrick's Cathedral, right? The old, the real St. Patrick's Cathedral, yeah. and he goes in the door. We walk in there. There's a whole thing, and he and he and there's a piece of furniture, and he's reaching to the wall, and he's like trying to rub the wall. His family's names engraved on really? the wall. I, this family who passed away, his grandparents and stuff. Okay? Yeah. So he's like, you see the family, the, uh, the um, you know, Capuccio and La Morta was his mother's um, maiden name, I believe. Name. Okay. And um, he's like rubbing it, and then. He's like moving the furniture. I put my hat on. He's like, take your hat off because I went to move the furniture for him. And then he turns around. He's like, St. Rocco. He opens the door to the cathedral and he sees St. Rocco in a stained window. And he comes outside and there's actually a statue of St. Rocco. If you could ever interview him. Yeah, I'm, I'm, supposed to go to his, I'm supposed to go to his apartment and do another one. Don't, day don't fucking tell him to tell you a story about St. Rocco. He actually stole the statue. He had, he had the statue of St. Rocco in his where he lived. And he used to put his jewelry on it. Right. So yeah. so finally, once people caught on that it was gone, he got called down to go talk to about the statue. Oh, so he shit. had to like roll. They, he said he rolled. They stole when they stole it. It was had an Italian flag. He said that when they stole it, they wrapped it up in the Italian flag like a body and they carried they carried it. They stole <laughs> it. So he had to return it. And go meet somebody who was on the news who's no longer you know alive. But yeah. he actually had to come and turn it in. Yeah, had to have a little school, conversation. Old school story. He was a young kid. Then he told us a story about, he's like, stand right here. So me and Gal was like, he was standing on the sidewalk. He tells a story to, to some people sometimes. I, other people have heard this, I'm sure. Yeah. And he's like, see that window right now? It's in first grade. <laughs> he's like, JFK got killed. He's like, I'll never forget it. He's like, everyone was crying in the street. Like, he's telling us the story. Yeah. about like when John F. Kennedy got assassinated yeah. and all, everybody was in the street crying like crazy. Yeah. And he's like, I don't care. I got off of school tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was just, he was like reliving his life. And I recorded it on my phone without him knowing just because, you know, Vinny, I love him. And some of the moments I have with him, I, I don't have any memories just because you live it. But I feel like yeah. something, listen, listen, I'm not saying, you know, Vinny's getting older. I got to like cherish sure. these moments of yeah. things that happened. Um, I, I mean, like, he's such a special individual. The, yeah. the man is like, he's such a such an amazing being. And God he forbid, really he's is. Like, and he's not only an older brother to me; he's almost like an uncle to me. You know, yeah, like, sure. You know, he's he's been there for me so many so many times. You know, I really think uh, uh, I don't know what I would do without him around. I, I hope yeah. he doesn't have him, man. I hope he does. You know, and I can't wait to see him at the show. Yeah. You know, I mean, God, listen, how many years? Forty years. Forty years of victim and pain. It's insane. It's insane. I was like, I was eight when it came. It's, it's, it's just nuts. I Fucking know. crazy. Yeah, I, was, I was seven, so right behind. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Fucking 40 crazy. years of victim and pain. Yep. A blessed man. Slap shot, conservative military image. Fucking Great lineup. Great lineup. Lies. Fucking <laughs> get the shot. If you want to ask, it's full. Full-blown chaos, 20 years of fucking Wake the Demons. How is that even 20 years? 20 fucking, years. Dude, that's crazy to me. Yeah, fucking old bastards. Uh, yeah. Crazy, it man. It's going to be a great It's gonna be a great weekend. And then you got the Sunday show, which... That's which, a fucking banger, bro. Which, you know, which, which sometimes what happens is that show really kind of came through because of the tour. Because, listen, after COVID happened, people were booking, bands were booking tours and stuff, like, way farther in advance. So, like... It's hard to coordinate and stuff, and people have always been respectful to the Black and Blue Bowl, and I guess uh, Scanlon was involved with that. He's like the young, up-and-coming guy yeah. booking shows, does a long hour, and he is involved with the renovations taking place, part owner, I believe, of the Amityville Music Hall, maybe? Nice. Well, he's involved with that. They're, at that place, you don't know about that. They're, they're opening it up, making it bigger. Nice. So, yeah, which is great, because it is too small, and they get rid of those big pillars that are in the way when you stare and look at the fucking stage. Yeah. But he got involved uh, and was like, listen, we were like, why don't we work together? Why don't we absorb the tour, and we'll add some bands to it? They, will, they were like, we want Mad Bull to play. 
So that's Mambo got put in. Te- that's that that weekend is gonna be bananas. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know what happened, but there was an idea of us doing that show on the street. Really? Yeah, it came. I don't know. I think the guys from Drain had an idea of shutting down the block, which I'm cool with, and we were like, oh, cool. Cool. but I think it became a little bit too involved with maybe because what happens is you worry about if it rains and then yeah. uh, so I think they kind of itchnate, but it was gonna be outside. How crazy would that have been? That would have been crazy, but don't you need fucking city permits to shut down the block and all that shit too? Yeah, yes, yeah. I think and you gotta do it way in advance. That's what yeah. sucks. And again, like I said, they don't make it easy for you, you know. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a ridiculous fucking show. Drain, Madball, Terror, Scowl, Regulate, End It, Trail of Lies, Private Mind. That's a fucking redu- ridiculous show right there. That shit sold out in like fucking 20 minutes. It's fucking crazy. Uh, yeah. I think there's I think there's a few tickets left for Saturday. It's almost sold out, but it's you know that that'll sell out. It's gonna be yeah. a great thing. Listen, everything goes in cycles a lot. I feel like how many years been doing this? You have those years when the older bands, they kind of get forgot about. Yeah. By yeah. the younger kids, you'll go to shows and it'll be all the older middle-aged guys. And then like four years go by and then you go see an actor front and it's filled with kids. Every like cycle happens. It's so yeah. crazy. I witnessed it. You've witnessed it. Yeah. Like people forget about AF and then they come back. But I feel bad because a lot of kids better get into it because they're not going to be around forever. So right. Right. I you mean, know, but it's it's that weekend is very it's one of the best lineups I think combined we ever had, and I got to thank uh, Scanlon and the, everyone from Drain and that and that group that was uh, willing to work together with Freddie. Freddie actually worked that out um, himself. So, but yeah, I mean, listen, it's gonna be an amazing weekend, dude. Crazy, yeah. yeah. I'm fucking get some rest for that shit because I'm gonna be. Yeah. Oh, I'm no spring fucking chicken, man. I, I, I only I only lace up my dancing shoes for a couple of bands nowadays. You know what I mean? I, I get tired talking to more people, too many people. Oh, bro, I know. Hey, me ah, too. I've had it. Like uh, I went to the GH, the Kings one, and I'm just like, I just want to be on the stage next to me. I can't. Like I, I, I'm fucking tired, bro. Dude, I know. I know. You know? I know. But like somebody like like somebody like Tara, Manball. Yeah, I might I might you know lace my shoes up a little bit tighter. I give you, I give you credit, man. I just. Yeah, it's it's gonna it's it's gonna be it's been a minute for me, but obviously uh, I think what I think I I've been kind of more antisocial than I used to be. I think uh, for whatever reason, maybe yeah. old, my older age, but like sometimes I just want to yeah. be like I want to be just kind of I need my little I need my little mental space, so I just kind of yeah. I'll go like in my truck yeah. and I'll just kind of listen to music sometimes. Yeah. You know what it is? It's like uh, when you're there all day, sometimes it gets a little draining. Yeah. And, and like you got to kind of pick and choose your your things, you know, what's going on. I think that uh, uh, it's more of like the production side of things. I used to always wonder why like people like Freddie or guys like Warren, they would usually like to leave for a little while. Okay. And I used yeah, to like, I'm I'm, yeah, well, now I'm at that point. Yeah. I Because I, I wasn't involved as long as them. Right. I, as far as directly with like, Freddie's been playing since he was 15. Warren's been involved. I, you know, I, you know, they they were involved in the, the actual building of the events and the shows contributing early. So I'm, so finally I hit that point where I'm like, oh, now I know why they take a break and they go away for like two, three hours. These fucking yeah. guys. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, most band members today, if you're even young kids now, they'll like leave yeah. to kind of chill, you know? Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a long fucking day. It's a yeah. long day. I don't know. Whose idea was they booking these shows with 16 bands? Fucking damn it. Jesus. I don't know. <laughs> well, you're a maniac. I mean, how many fucking weekends judge headline, which was insane, webs all two weekends in a row, fucking million bands? Crazy. Uh, yeah, man. That really, it's really crazy how time's flying and all these events we're doing. It's just, it's really cool, man. And I'm happy that it's still going. It's re- and what's cool, there's really some really good young bands out, which is, yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little bit detached more than I was because... Just because of life, you know. Yeah, but, same here. Yeah. But I keep I keep track of some of your, my younger younger guys from Long Island. And they'll send me shit. Busky's really good at keeping up with shit. Mm-hmm. More than, you know, he's really good. He's doing the uh, the Hoya podcasting uh, still. But uh, it's uh, I try to get my I, I have like him Yvonne from from Connecticut. These they're like more of like a hardcore nerdy type. They well, let me tell you something about Ivo. You just mentioned Busky and Yvonne. Because I, I, I've sat in, in Busky's backyard and did this and, and did a podcast with him several years ago before COVID and all that shit. Uh-huh. And fucking, bro, let me tell you something. When I, when I was talking to him, I would I was breaking his balls because I really want him to bring back Manipulate, bro. Oh, bro, I fuck. Those two demos are the hardest shit. And he even said, he was like, he has finished Manipulate songs. I know. I'm I know. like... I know. I put it out. He's like, no. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, yeah. I think that, uh, I, I remember that being the conversation and, you know, Busky, uh, Busky 
Busky told me that. I was wondering, I don't know what's up with that. Maybe Yvonne, Yvonne just likes to eat his Snickers and like hang out. Maybe it's just. Yeah, yeah. I did one of Yvonne. It was funny, bro. If you go back in the archives, I did one with Yvonne too. We're sitting on a fucking bench, like by the water. Like, like I just, it was just only audio. It was like, like two college kids, like looking at each other, having a conversation. It was hilarious. <laughs> it was fucking like, ridiculous. Oh my God. You know, like people asking, what bridge is that? People are coming over. Ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Fucking funny shit, man. But yeah, I loved that fucking band, bro. Manipulating yeah. some fucking hard shit. Yeah, that, that was a cool, nice little addition, man. That was good. That yeah. Was good. You know, yeah. shit happens. What are you going to do? Yeah, what are you going to do? I still listen to that shit. It's, it's, it's on more often than not still, that shit. Yeah. Yeah. So now, since we're going to fucking, we're talking about shows right quick. You know, you you, you know, there's there's a, a New York City tattoo convention coming up at Terminal Five. Yeah, that's fucking crazy. So um, obviously, growing up years ago, uh, you know, going to Roseland with all the Third Street guys just to run that event, the Terror. You know, I, I've you know I've done some like dealings with them, just help cross promote. That yeah. was a beautiful, authentic New York City event at Roseland. Yeah. Uh, that I feel like was an awesome part of the city. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that if the guy didn't sell Roseland for millions of billions of dollars, they'd probably still be happening. Yeah. Um, so when it, ha- when it died out, I don't know, like, I guess I was kind of like, I'm all about like reestablishing authentic New York shit, you yeah. know, like establishing yeah. the, 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 um, I don't want to say the food chain, but I feel like sometimes things get lost in like fantasy land. And I just felt like it really wasn't a good expression of a tattoo ex- ex- uh, uh, convention in the city. And obviously, I would never step on toes because I'm, you know, friendly with people. But once I realized that it wasn't happening and there was nothing, nothing like that to be, uh, you know, kind of like be stepping on toes respectfully, I was like, you know what? I've been thinking about doing it. So like before COVID, I was kind of talking about it. My buddy Mike was the general manager at Webster Hall. And I was like, you know, Mike, I want to I want to maybe bring back the tattoo convention. He's like, oh, there's like some tattoo thing at the Javits Center. It's like called the Expo. Yeah. With all due respect, never even heard of it. I never went. I've you know what's crazy. You know what I found out is because I'm always not trying. I'm not. I've always tried to be cool with people. I don't. You know. Uh, remember when the Black and Blue Bowl uh, every year, Ink Magazine would come and take pictures of everybody. Yep. Remember yep. for like for years, right? And yes. those those guys were great, and they were there for a long time, and then um, they stopped coming, and then it was kind of funny because I think they started the convention like a year or two later on the same weekend as the bowl was, which is fine. And they, so it was kind of like they figured maybe that was a good weekend because the bowl's going I don't know. I remember happening. I didn't even know what was going on, but Heidi was working with them. Heidi Minks. Yeah. Love you, Heidi. And uh, whatever. But people told me, like, these big conventions, there's, like, thousands of artists. It's really kind of overly, like, kind of, like, not as not as much quality. Okay. Uh, uh, just quantity. Yeah. So – when, I, when he was at Webster, Mike from Frano, he was like, yeah, this club's really not great for it. So fast forward, COVID um, came across. And then I ended up getting a phone call from Mike. He's like, cuz, I'm on, I'm the GM at Terminal 5 now. I said, oh, shit. Sick. You know? So I know Mike from 25 years ago when he was doing security with Rich Ventry from Staten Island. You know Rich? I don't. Remember Rich, had glasses, security guy? You probably see him. If, if, by face, I probably know yeah. him. That guy, of course. Yeah, he they're, so they're all like, connected through like Staten Island, Long Island, uh, the Brooklyn Queens, whatever. So he was the security guy when the specials played uh, Terminal Five 15 years ago. That first big show back, he let Mike let us in the door, like all New York hardcore. I would make the call just like CBGBs, and he would let in like Civ, me. We rolled in like 20, 30 deep. The show sold out. He was yeah. like took care of all of us, you know. So fast forward, he's the GM of the building. He was doing security at crazy. Yeah. Right? yeah. So I go there to do I go there to do an emergency call. They lost power, which is crazy. And I was talking to him about doing the convention. And he was like, why don't you do it here? So I said, You sure? He's like, Yeah. So I had to I had to pick somebody to do that with. I'm not a tattoo guy, but I have the means to do events and I have the, the connection with the building. Yeah. You know, just what I do. I don't know. I just could make you it happen. Hooks. So I just, you know, I, I was like, who would I ask? Now, I could have asked a lot of people, you know, I could have did it through black and blue, but I was kind of like the whole pandemic and COVID shit. A lot of people said some things I didn't really like, and it kind of made me think about some things. Yeah. So 
I ex Siv. Siv is a good friend of mine. I've known Siv for a long time. He's a brother of mine that 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 I could talk to, and he'll tell me the harsh truth of what I want to hear and don't want to hear. You know. Yeah. And I respect him as a tattooist. He's done my whole yeah. body. I mean, you know, he spent hours. Siv's, on a, Siv's a great guy. I'm not going to sit here and say I know him very well, but he invited me to his house. I yeah. sat at his fucking dining room table. We had coffee. We recorded a podcast for. Yeah. Um, yeah. He he is one of the most genuine, real people you ever meet. And he would give you the shirt off his back. So, you know, I went to him and I said, you know, I'm sh and I'm sure he spoke. He's like, he was thinking about doing something too, but I know that he never did anything. So I said, Sid, would you want to be my partner? And um, I said, I know I, I, I mean, I could X someone else, but. I figured you, you would, you know, you let's do it. I, you know, it just was meant to be. Sure. And then boom, we started a company called Native New Yorker Productions. Beautiful. Uh, you know, Civic makes like, sense. Makes yeah. sense. So it really is working out great. We have three days: Friday, Saturday, Sunday of July 26, 27, 28th. I don't even know. I should have the fall. I here. believe so. Yeah. Yeah. That weekend of July, uh, we have uh, that all those shows that are going on. Pretty much. Wow. On oh, the fucking out. roof, bro. Crazy. I don't have to fly to read, but into into it. Saturday is into another orange nine. That's fucking awesome. Shout out to fucking Chaka. Yeah, yeah. Raw Brigade, Raw Brigade. I've seen Raw Brigade at this is hardcore. They're from like where were they from? They're from Columbia. Columbia. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, crazy. I believe so. Yeah. They, uh, they, uh, you know, all, the whole weekend, Earth Crisis, you know, listen. Integrity, you know, dead people. guy, yeah. Yeah, dead guy. We have, uh, we have the uh, uh, roof. It's, this is all happening on the rooftop. That's fucking awesome. It's not that. It's like the, it's like the middle rooftop. It's not huge. It's, it's small. Yeah. And they've never done shows up there. It's wild. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy. We have the, the Rumblers hopefully getting about the car show. We're going to have vendors there, food. It's going to be amazing. We have... You know, Sid was very picky about the tattoo artist. You know, me, I don't know. I had everybody in their mother hit me up. Yo, cuz, let me get a spot. Yeah. And he was, you know, I was going to like, I just played, you know, I like to play. He's the bad guy. I don't know. Talk to Sid, you know? Yeah, 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 of course. So, you know, he's like, cuz, we don't want every tattoo artist from New York because they live here, obviously. People can get tattooed by them all the time. Right. So he made it a point to make sure these were all nicely picked tattoo artists. Yeah. So from out of town, other countries, some, some of the best female tattoo artists. Nice. Uh, yeah, man, I'm pumped, man. I'm happy. Sib's wife, Mary, is helping us out. Chris uh, is our guy, like, to help out with some of the graphics and, and the website setup. There's some really, the team that was created to do this, it really was just wild how it came together. Yeah. And, uh, it's different for me because normally the Black and Blue Bowl, I normally uh, are hands on with everything because that's just how we used to do it. So this is weird for me because now I, I'm, you know, I'm not stupid. I'm going to let Sib handle the tattoo side. Sure. So it's like, I sometimes I feel like, ah, what can I do? Yeah. But my time's coming now. I'm going to be there for the chaos the day of, setting up the boots and getting all the electric working. I went there the other day with the lighting guy from the, from the, from the club, and we're making sure the electrical is sufficient for all the boots. It's going to be over 120 artists there. We're going to have a ton of shit, man. It's so. a fucking big venue, man. I've been to several shows there. So the 10, remember, the, remember the 10 for 10 tour? Yeah, that was $10. Ten dollars, ten bands. I was like, was, I'm seeing fucking mad ball trapped on the ice, Terra, like ten fucking bands. I was, it, it was insane. In um, yeah, that was uh, Tim. What's his name? Tim Bohr, I think, put that on. Tim Bohr was, okay. I, think, I think, Tim Bohr's his name. He put on that show. I think he was involved with that. One of the agents. And shit, that's not, if that's not hardcore, ten bands for ten dollars. I, I didn't understand how they thought they did that. Honestly. I was gonna say, I don't know, I don't understand how that guy didn't lose his fucking shirt. Yeah, that place, that place is an amazing building. It's big, though, so you have to, like, big. fill it up, you know? I, and it's kind of weird. I didn't know... Uh, I like all types of music, so when I went to go do an emergency hey, call man. and I had this conversation, this guy, Teddy Swims, is playing. And right. I actually got to see him play, you know? So okay. I, I don't know if you know who he is, but the guy is like, huge, huge now. He sings like... He's like, you know, just some big singer. He's like a... A white guy with tattoos on his face out of nowhere, but he's got he's got a really great voice, and he's like he comes from he's a real dude when you when, when you watch him play. He came out on stage and he flipped the shoes off, played in the socks. <laughs> nice. Yeah, I was like, what well, is this guy cooking his toes on the PA? I was like, this guy's feeling like he's into it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so so uh, Terminal Five. Um, I think that I should know the ideas. NYC Tat uh, Tat Tat dot com convention. 
Uh, you can find the um, the IG. All that, all the, I'm gonna put all those links in the description on okay, there. Cool. Yeah, I'll put all that. Shit. Yeah, it's and, and you know we had to, this is the first people like oh it's not the first ever tattoo convention it's the first annual tattoo and arts convention. Right. It's not, it's, and actually, we we couldn't use that anyway because they those guys they copyrighted that name. Gotcha. Tat- New York City Tattoo Convention is actually, I think, copyrighted by them. Right. So, we, we, you know, obviously, you got to respect the copyright. So, yeah. but it's also, it's different. It's a, it's a tattoo and arts convention. So right. I went to, uh, I went up to Hudson Valley for the tattoo convention that they had there. And uh, it's kind of weird because, I don't know, I'm handing flyers out. And then, like, I, fo- I forgot, like, there's a lot of people there that probably applied that couldn't get in. So I was right. handing out the flyers and they're like, yeah, I applied, but I didn't hear back. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but but it's ex- it's ex- there's some good tattoo artists in New York that aren't even going because they just right they just won't like like, yes, like what said you can get tattooed tomorrow by them yeah so it's gonna be amazing man and we're gonna do it every year so you know yeah mm-hmm. yeah man so what about um what what's what, what's going on with uh East Village Radio Are you bringing that back what's the story before we even get into that I want to thank you because I years ago. I started booking little shows at Lucky 13. And I let you know. I think I even asked you, like, if it's cool, like, if I do it, you were like, yeah. And then you were like, come on the show. And I was on the show and I read it all off. So, like, mm-hmm. you didn't have to do that. But I just want to thank you for that. You gave me, like, the blessing to do that. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, let me get a drink. Hold on one second. Go get a drink. Take your time. Hold on one second. I get a, get a, get a seltzer. A nice seltzer. Well, I can just throw this out there to support Generation Records. Follow them at Generation Records on Instagram, located at 210 Thompson Street in the West Village. Um, they're the sponsor of the Brooklyn Blast for this podcast. Shout out to Ron Gamaldi and Mark. And uh, yeah, they've been around since 1992. So if you're in the area, go there and buy a couple of two tree records. But uh, Generation Records is uh, it's a it's a West Village staple at this point. They do great shit. New Shia Terra Vinyl just dropped too. Repressive just can't hate enough. It's amazing. Leeway Born to Expire as well. They have Generation Records exclusive. Mm-hmm. All right, all right. So, And you'll probably be able to get Black and Blue Bowl tickets there too, no? What's that? Wait, Generation? Oh, yeah, yeah. They, actually, they actually have... Uh, I dropped them off to uh, Ron or, uh, or Mark. Someone, we dropped them off there. They're there. Okay, there you go. Go get your yeah. tickets. Uh, well, maybe tomorrow we have to work. Tomorrow I'll go and scoop up my own. Do they have, um, do they have the Sunday show there too? Oh, they're sold out, man. That's it. Ah. Go on. I'm trying to find something for that. But the uh those are gone. Those were sold out pretty fucking quick, dude. You mm-hmm. know? I, I mean, uh well for that, yeah, like I said, I think it was like 20 minutes online. There were no there were no room for tickets after that. But uh, in regards to the radio station, uh yeah, that that kind of was, you know, that was a fun time. It was tough. I mean, getting fucked up on a Tuesday on uh, with mm-hmm. everybody. It was like a rough Wednesday, Thursday, and then Friday came. I was feeling younger. Yeah. But yeah. that last that lasts in a while. We listen, I I got um someone gave me the hard drive with all the fucking shows. I don't know where I put it I, over the time. I must have put but I found someone found uh, an archive. I showed you the Yeah. Yeah, you texted me the link. Yeah. Somebody fucking posted a lot of the shows with the set list of the songs you played. Yeah. Uh, There's like something like 150 episodes somewhere around there. Yo, that th- they had one of the first shows because I forgot when we first got X to do that. That that was through the Frank One Five One book when we did that book for the crew, right? Uh, the DMS book. The um, Mike hooked us up. We did the show. We split two hours with Big Cap. Big Cap was a DJ from Hot ninety seven, right. and I, I felt and listen, you know, listen, online radio was big, but hip hop radio stations were kind of like a dime a dozen. There was so many and we ended up taking over his hour. I feel bad, but, and rest in peace, big Cappy passed away. Right. Um, but he was so cool. It was, but we were with like an iconic DJ doing hip hop and hardcore. And then we took the two hours and what, one of the shows that I found, like it was the very beginning. You could tell we're so fucking rusty. They, they like, green. Yo, Sean Dixon's on it. Yo. Shout out to SD. I saw him yeah. last week. Yo, I can't believe it. I, I was, I, it's, I, I had a cube behind the screen that you're on, and I was cracking up because Sean <laughs> was not. Yo, yo, some kid was on the show. Sean was just saying funny shit. I was dying, but that was an amazing time, man. We had a lot of fun down there. You came yeah. down. Right? Yeah, I came down a lot, man. We all so, went out to eat. We all fucking, yeah, it was fucking dude, good they, fun. They, you know, there's no money involved with that. It was about nah. the community, but so I got word that. 
they were going to come back. So I didn't remember like what was going on as far as who was in charge. My friend George uh, Jordan told me he's 240 Deuce, big hip hop station. He he he's he's the, he's the guy who found Trinidadian, the guy hip hop old hip hop dude. He's from Georgia. He's very involved with the Georgia hip hop scene. He had a 40 Deuce radio show. It had all these he, uh, big Mike. Another rapper he like knows really well. Me and him were talking. He was helping out with some things. And he said he heard they were coming back. So I reached out and uh, he said, talk to Jorge. And I was like, who's Jorge? I forgot. So I go to little Frankie's. Our, our friend Irox's mother passed away. She was getting buried at the, um, she was getting, having a service at the Ortiz one across from little Frankie's, the, the local Lower East Side funeral home right there. I haven't and, seen Irox in a long time. How's yeah, his mother, his mother had cancer. She passed away. Rest in peace. So. Uh, Brownie, her name was Brenda but she was hard, hard girl, hard, hard as nails. Yeah, she might have saved Sean Dixon's life from getting really, yeah, yeah, an I issue. Won't, I won't get into it, but some crazy shit happened at down one six nine ball one day. And Sean had not a lot of people, a lot of people not happy with him, and you know, she she kind of squashed a lot of uh little pop pops that could have happened. Nice. But, All right, <laughs> but yo, know, his mother was came out for New Year's. His mom came out. Like they, they came out for years a couple of times. Uh, I rock's a good friend of mine. I love yeah. him. Uh, but we went across the street to go have food at Little Frankie. So I walk in the door, and it was ironically a Tuesday night. Huh? So we walk <laughs> in the door. It's me, Mikey Torado, who helped the radio show at the time. He's uh, He plays with Marauder now, like minus Marauder. And we sit at the bar, and we're hanging out, having food. We're talking about how, you know, cool. I said, oh, they might want to bring back the radio show. Mike's like, I'll do it. And then who walks in the door is this guy. I forgot who he is, but I, I'm like, is that Jorge? He walks, the guy, Jorge, walks in the door. We, I say hello to him, but I don't remember his name. He don't remember me. He's like, right. who's this fucking big guy hugging me? Yeah. So he sits down with the girl, and I'm kind of like borderline getting up. Like, should I be bothered? But yeah. I don't know his name. So I'm like, right. so all of a sudden he goes, you're like, cuz, wow, cuz. So we hug, <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I heard you did a radio show. He goes, yeah, you're coming back. And then boom. So it was like, just like, here we are back at, he's like, we, they got a guy set it up. They want us to do Thursday night, six to eight o'clock. So we'll see. I don't know if I could do it full time. It's just tough, you know, these days, but I would definitely let Jimmy do it more. Yeah. And I would be there. And I, I, my goal is this, is that is to get young kids involved, you know, like the younger guys, like, cause I feel like there comes a time where you kind of have to kind of pass the torch and like, yeah. you know, uh, you know, cause it's, it's really what people did to me. You know, yeah. like in a way, uh, maybe I think I might have just took the torch because no one was yeah. really doing anything. But either way, I have the ability to 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 do this to people. So I, I reached out to some younger hardcore kids from New York and Long Island area that yeah. I said I have I would like maybe to get people involved uh, and maybe kind of have this radio show be like a New York based hardcore punk radio station where like I let like these younger kids handle the programming. I just kind of oversee it. Yeah. And maybe once in a while, like Jimmy could be involved. I'll pop in, but we're going to bring it back. It's going to be a different animal. I really want awesome. to, I, I kind of want to let the younger kids maybe be involved. And, and get right. it. So yeah, it's going to happen. I just don't know exactly uh, how it's going to be. So All um, right. yeah. oh, that's awesome though. You yeah. got a lot. I mean, plus, bro, you just named 74 things that you're in the middle of. I mean, you have a, you have a wife, you have kids, you have your own business, you have fucking... I don't know how you all have that, but I have the kids. But I'm a kid, but yeah. But, he, uh, but, I, but, uh, but yeah, but listen, and then I run my, I'm a licensed, I'm a mess electrician. I'm an electrical business. Right. So, you know, I'm doing that. So it's just like, yeah, I'm fucking busy. It's, yeah. it's tough. And, and, and I definitely need to cut some things out of, out of the agenda, the schedule, but... You know, we'll see. I mean, this is who I am. So I've always just been doing shit to, like, make it happen, man. I want to, like, if, there, if, if there's an opportunity, like, the radio station, like, it's probably not ideal for me to be involved with that full time. But I feel like I feel like I, I think I'm doing the right thing by grabbing a hold of it and kind of like, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Makes sense. That'd be yeah. awesome if it comes yeah, back. Yeah, man. So, sites, you yeah. know. Yeah. Good. A lot of good shit going on, brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. But, uh, but, yeah, it's been, um. A lot of good shit going on in the world, man. I mean, a lot of bad shit going on in the world, but oh, a lot, of, a lot of, a lot of good shit happening. Um, in regards to like, um, you know, like, like people still trying to make shit happen with music. Yeah. Friends of ours are still touring, bouncing around, doing the yeah. thing. I mean, to me, it's like, oh, you know, it's actually. I got to talk to you. Uh, maybe I don't know if you want to keep this in there or not. But Delancey Bar is doing, looking to do shows. Really, you know, Delancey Bar is right. You come across the Williamsburg Bridge on the right. Um, okay. 
as soon as you get before you get off the bridge when it gets low it's right there they're trying to do hardcore punk shows there really so if, any, if anybody out there is listening and you want to do shows uh at a new spot that is looking for bookings i don't have the time to do it yeah. uh there's a, there's a you could go there and ask they're looking to fill fill book like fill the calendar really yeah it's nice. like a cool yeah cool little spot the lancy bar yeah i've Look never the been there Maybe yeah, I'll uh, check it out. Years ago, yes, these have like these have weird parties there, but uh, it's pretty cool, you know. I want to weird weird parties. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I'll tell you. So I'll tell you one story. So this is actually not even long long ago. So <laughs> Little Frankie's was having their ten or twenty year anniversary party. Right. Frank, Frank, who owns Little Frankie's and like supper and all these places, daddies. All he's he's an awesome guy, very very awesome individual. He's the guy who was involved with letting us do the radio station, right? Yeah. So he had this party going on, and when I tell you, this is actually not too long ago, but there's been parties like this earlier, and like he made this party like an '80s, like sexy kind of crazy party. I'll tell all you, right. What. So, so the line was down the block. The food was catered by Little Frankie's. He had like 10 DJs. There was a mime online. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like, yo, everyone was fucking whacked, right? Yeah. Like, I walk in the door. Of course, you know, a couple of me and the guys walk in the door. It's obvious, like, there's people that like us, people that don't. And right. I'll just, so I go to find Frank. Frank's like a total, like, pimp. He's got this, like... He's got this milk, like milk pattern, like jacket on, buttoned up. Like he's got his glasses on, total pimp. Yeah. Like, hanging out. You know, Frank does like, he does like naked Instagram, like cooking shit on his Instagram. People, it's so, yo, it's so funny. I love people, I feel like, oh my God. But I'm fucking sitting there hanging out. There's like party room, right? Yeah. People, there were these Brazilian dressed gold girl dancers, beautiful girls. Well, they were covered in like gold paint. They look pretty. And they had these crazy outfits that were like apparently like, whatever they like later got like all fucking sexy and shit and yeah. they were dan- it was like an insane wild party and i'm sitting there and I'll, everyone's kind of hanging out the music so i look around and this guy with a bolt sitting there and i look down right in the middle of the crowd and there's a girl sucking his dick really right oh. in the middle of the party all like, right i haven't been to a party in a long time where someone's yeah. getting dick sucked right in the open yeah right in the, right in the middle of the it's open like, that's some old school shit like yeah, it's know, old school and listen i'm looking at my and yeah. no that's no Sunday one. night at the limelight rock and roll church shit right yeah so I was like I looked at G I, and I looked around and I said this is a fucking party yeah so, it is. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I mean, it's like that's some old school New York shit and I, I didn't want to see the girl's face because maybe I knew it but I just saw her head right. I, you never I, know. Like, I don't know if it's somebody you know, who knows but that there, that place was known to have parties like that they had like little raves actually I think I Oh no! I thought we had Busky's wife's birthday party the years ago, but but that place has been doing events and shows for a long like years ago. Oh, they had some band. It's like a Queen cover band. They're called um, I don't know, but the guys look they just have, all crazy or some shit. It was a Queen. Call. One of the song. One of the songs was the name of the band. Of course, but, yo, the party was insane, man. But that place, if you if anyone wants to book shows. Uh, I've been getting emails from this random girl, Joe Rubino from fucking Ice Cold Killers, actually. Nice. Information to, to, to her, her information. Shout to out to me. Joe Rubino. Great band, Ice Cold Killers. Ice Cold Killers. Gotta love Joe Rubino. Okay, yep. Also, tension guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some cool shit going on. The city definitely, like, listen, the city's definitely fucked up, but there's still a lot of cool shit happening, you know? Yeah. 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 Awesome. Yeah. So. Yeah, brother. Good yeah. shit. Yeah. How long are we going? We're going for a solid hour and change, yeah. I think. Yeah, I don't I mean, you know, whatever you want to ask me. Oh, by the way, this this is, I want to just give a love to my boys. This is Steve Poss. This is a bullet ah. that they put his ashes in. Steve Poss. Really? Yeah. I don't know if you can read that. Poss. Yeah, no, I can see. I can see it. Yeah. So there's a whole bunch of you guys that have that? Yeah. Yeah. That's just, awesome. Yeah, Steve, man. A lot, you know, a lot of people, you know, passed away and we got always you know eddie's with eddie's with past eddie's with jack flanagan eddie's with all people that we know and love together so yeah you know, everyone's um you know everyone's got to be proud of like the legacy that all these people leave behind man but we're, yeah. we're really I, I you know i'm 47 and i fucking i realize all the time how lucky i am Sometimes I feel like it's a curse. No, but I feel like how lucky you have to be part of the scene. And yeah. like, if you want to call it that. And like the family community, it's really, we, yeah. I mean, you've met some, listen, everybody's fucking misfits in their own way, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to have people that are a little quirky. We're all a little quirky, but yeah. I, I don't think- You have to be. You, you have know, to be a little quirky. You know, there's nothing, 
like it. No, like I've ever ever would experience, and it's really it really still is such a beautiful thing. I mean, even just this past week, Jimmy, what happened with Jesse? Uh, everyone pulling the show, pulling together to make that show happen. Yep. <coughs> yeah, yeah, not sad. Still there. So, fucking crazy, but that's awesome, and I'm sure it's going to be an awesome turnout. I'm sure Jesse's going to be super appreciative of it all, and uh, yeah, man. Yep. So there's nothing but good shit going on, and uh, well, as far as shows and tattoo conventions and. Yeah, man, you know, we're trying to make those shows, making moves, bro. In 2024, who would have figured? Listen, you know what? The world, let's not be, let's not, let's not be be in in denial. The world has definitely become like a fucking very, very deceitful place more than ever out in the open. Yeah. But but, uh, if anybody gets down and and gets depressed and like you're like kind of feeling like kind of bummed out, you got to try to figure out a way to fucking make it positive because that's what. People that um, are trying to take advantage of of the little guy, they yeah. don't give a fuck about you being upset and sad and depressed. And like me, I got my kids, you know, yeah. that, that need me. And I'm sure if someone's out there watching this and you've been down and out for the last few years of what's going on in the world, just know that's people that care about you, man. If you need yeah. help, ask for it. Uh, I think yeah. that's very, very important to know. Yeah. Um, mental health situation of, of the world uh, with what, they, what they're doing to kids and making people feel like and just... It's really, really not right. Uh, but no. you gotta try to adapt and protect your sanity. Yeah. And let's not forget, let's try to remember that. Like, let's people need to remember, like, I've with me, like, it's sad that I got accused of being a, 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 a I don't even know, a Trump fan. I voted for Bernie. I, like, yeah. I don't I don't even care anymore because obviously every two years they call me something different. So I'm doing of my job. Yeah. But, like, yeah. but I really wish people would see the divide and the conquer. That is the goal here. You know? Oh, just, and, it, and it works like a fucking charm. It's, 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 it's like the whole COVID thing. So like, like I won't get super into it, but it was like a social experiment to see how fast everyone will obey uh, and everyone fucking all over. You know, listen, I, I, I mean, you know, the shit that was said to me and about me for being wrong. And then obviously nothing I said was wrong. Right. I, and I, I got really, I got, listen, I'm not asking for pity, but I was basically crucified for five years for being honest. You right. know, so, and, and I, and I had people that, you know, I won't mention the names, but they're people that play in bands that sing a lot of lyrics. Yeah. That really show me their true colors. And, yeah. Um, you know, and it's okay, I, but it's not. But right. my point is that, the, and I don't want to get caught up in the divide and conquer myself, right. so because I'm I'm human too. I've been caught, I've been wrong before, you know. But I think we all need to kind of remember, like, they don't give a fuck about any of us, no, no matter what like the, the party you feel like. We're all getting yeah. fucked, yeah, every day of our yeah. lives. Yeah. And at this point, we should really be sticking together with something because we're not getting any help from anybody. Whether, no, no, whatever, whatever party you want to affiliate yourself with. Yeah, uh, the world like these fucking people do not care about any of us. None so, of us. You know, and, and, with, and, and I've been, you know, one thing about me with the whole park thing is that I don't know. I kind of been in the belly of the beast since that. So like I've yeah. seen the true evil on a smaller level of, sure. but more than most the common man of what it's like, and it's fucking taxing. Yeah, you know, I'm it's sure. Very, I'm it's sure. very taxing. It, it takes a lot out of you because you learn how really fucked up shit is. Yeah. And how people that you think are like a certain way are not. When push comes to shove. Yeah. You learn how people really feel and what they'll do. Right. Yeah. So yeah. But don't lose faith and fucking let's try well, to. Props, like, props to you for fucking to doing what you're doing, bro. Because you, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean you, yeah. honestly, without you, I'm not sitting here blowing you, but it's like without you, a lot of shit wouldn't fucking happen because yeah. you got a pair of fucking balls and you do it and you say it and you're unapologetic about it. And yeah, th- that. that's far and few between. You know, like, like that shit doesn't happen no more. Everybody is. Yeah, you know, well, the thing is, what you say is Biden, you're, auto, you're automatically a Trump guy. Well, it's so weird because, Jimmy, whatever, I, 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 yell, I yell about everybody. I don't yeah, know. I know. You know, I know. I, I see all your shit. I got. I got. The, I got. I got blocked by family for bashing Trump, and you know. And then I got one year I'm Antifa, the next year I'm a fucking Nazi. I'm like, really? I'm like, meanwhile, I'm the one. Actually, I'm probably the only guy who beat up actual Nazis in the park. But right. You know, but the point is, it's just like, you know, uh, the the my, people like that come out and want to talk shit, and the ones who are the loudest, like. First of all, online is poison. You know, social uh, media, the fucking worst. I, I mean, like my kids, like. Ain't happening. Video right. games like limited. Like mm-hmm. I'm not playing that game. I see what it does to people. And nine out of ten times, the people who talk shit the most are like the biggest loser yep. hypocrites in yep. the world. 
Uh, and they haven't they haven't probably done half the shit people in the world that I've done with my pinky. Right. And, and listen, all all I have all I all the people that know me, you know, I could come across a little abrasive, but like my intentions are all in good good taste. Like I, I just care about everybody, you know. Uh, obviously, but to me, it's important even for myself uh, to try to not get caught up in the divide and conquer. I've always right. been, you know, I've gone to people's houses, customers' houses of mine, and had heart to hearts about the world strangers yeah and actually been hugged by yeah. people like it's like i run my life with um nothing but being honest you know what i'm saying so i really feel like people like uh you who are up front me if people are out there trying to tell you to shut up yeah ever in oh, your I've life been told to shut up so many fucking anyone times. ever tells you to shut up and keep your yeah. mouth shut yeah you might want to stay away from them yeah i you know? so yeah. They're, not, they're not really your friend so. right but that's that but yeah so i think it's important that we all realize that the, the point of, of this whole chaotic kind of c- confusion fucking you know uh situation of the world it's meant to fucking make us uh, uh confused of course and, and just you know try to try to always still be there for each other you know yep. And just com- listen, communicating in person is the thing to me. I've learned about that's why social media, I think, is, is the worst thing because right. if I text you too much, we could take it out, I take it wrong, right? 100%. There's, there's no there's no inflection, there's no context. you take right. it out of context. So when I see yeah. someone in person, we talk and it's over. Yeah. So I had Jimmy Gestapo, Jimmy G. Sorry, I can't say that. Jimmy, Jimmy G gave me, oh. uh, he gave me a, you know what? He gave me a tip, and I've been trying to do it with anybody, family, relationships, work. He's like, cuz. Once we text more than three times, you got to call. Yeah. Yeah. But it's the same thing because it's even worse when you're like communicating to humans online. You don't know. Everyone just goes crazy. So I think that, uh, you know, kind of be a little more understanding that the online stuff is not as serious as when you meet people in person. That's why, you know, I think we all need to kind of remember that divine and conquer is the focus and we got to try to fight that from happening. Yeah. yeah, Beautiful thing. It's true. Yeah, yeah, man. So good shit. You got enough sodas around there? I got. I'm a seltzer man. You like my dark side shirt? I do. I, I noticed it as soon as you came on. I'm a big fan. Shout out to Richie Dark Side. Richie. Yeah. Oh man, I like. Yeah, I love Richie. You and oh man, I just had flashbacks to hanging out with him on Sean's. You know, Sean's neighborhood as a kid, and just him just being crazy. He writes me some crazy texts about you. He's a very smart guy. Richie, okay. Richie, Richie is a Richie's a fucking genius. Richie, you're a fucking genius. Right? <laughs> anyway, I was driving down the conduit one day, right, coming home and uh, from like working in Brooklyn. I took the van. I take the conduit because I can't take you know the parkway. And I come to a light, and I'm like, I'm a, I'm a heavy driver, and I fucking come, and some guy's walking in front of my truck, and he goes, "It's Matt." Oh fuck! <laughs> he's like, "Cuz!" I'm like, "Ah!" Oh. Like, yo, it's, yo, it's so crazy. I was like, "No way!" Yeah, that shit happens. It's, it happens all the time. Then I ran into, yeah, I always run into people, man. All oh, the yeah. Long Island. I'll be working in Long Island or at the Shore Everyday Dollars. Yeah. That's a band. Yeah. Do you know? Do you did do you know that there's songs that they put out that they didn't tell anybody? Really? No, I didn't know that. Go to iTunes. Okay. And it's uh, something supply, not supply and demand. Um, go to go to go to fucking iTunes. All right. Check this fucking song out. You might have heard it, but. Sean told me that, that they they have songs that even like announced every day. They just threw it up there, just as like whatever. Oh, they, dude. Every day, every day dollars. Let me see, because you have to look if you don't know. It's called uh, every day dollars. Where is it? Every day dollars. What the fuck? Every day dollars. Library. Here it is. Uh, every day dollars. Let's see. Boom boom. It's called yeah, the age of demand. All right. Yeah, the check it out. Yeah, one of the one of the great one of the best songs on there is fucking uh, list of demands. All right. Yeah, check that out, yo. So there's some song that people never heard. I sent it to a couple of younger hardcore kids, I, to Austin who plays with a conservative military image, yeah. and very very dreams. Is that other band? I think I sent it to him. He's like, yo, what is this? He's like, is this new? I was like, yo, it's old. Wow. It's old. Like, yeah, that, that was a that was a that was a fun time. Shows at Manitoba's. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's crazy. There's so much talent out there, man. I'll never, I'll never like really, I never really like it's. It never stops to amaze me. Like Felipe from the Captures. Yeah. Um, this guy played in the Zombie Vandals, Murphy's Law, the Captures. You know, this fucking kid could write songs, Jimmy. He should be like a person who gets paid to write 
songs, rather jingles. Yeah. The kid is so talented. He just writes good music. It's Man. like there's some people out there that like are just that we know. And he wasn't like taught in school. Like Matty Pasta, these guys are great guitarists. And Matty, Matty Pasta is fucking insane, man. You know? I mean, come on, yo, it's really crazy that you know all the talent that is yeah. like so, so raw that we were blessed to see all these younger kids. You know, it's really fucking cool, man. Really yeah. cool. I, I, I'm going to be doing a show. Um, I might as well drop it to you now. I got involved with it. Uh, the Antiheroes. I haven't played New York in like 15 years. Wow. They're going to do a show at the Meadows July, June 16th. I think it's Father's Day. Okay. But it's going to be a nighttime show at the Meadows. Antiheroes, uh, Violent Way. Okay. Um, Burden. Uh one of the band burden fucking uh burden and maybe i think bo is he's the guy doing the tour he, he sings for the antagonizers i think they're a band but it's gonna be june 16th so uh, anti-heroes uh haven't played new york in a long time yep. they had a couple of shows that were packed a couple of shows weren't promoted well weren't that great but i think it's like gonna be a big deal so keep yeah. an eye out for the show june 16th at the medals anti-heroes and yep, right, uh, right next to the monarch real, yeah, quick yeah. Matty, real quick about maddie pasta i i drove the leeway guys with the eddie leeway show yeah. it was like tsunami fest in reading and we loaded up my truck and i drove everybody there and maddie couldn't talk to anybody bro in a two-hour drive from Coney Island to Reading, Pennsylvania, Matty Pasta was listening to the set list of the Leeway songs, and he practiced a little bit, and he learned all that shit within two hours, the Leeway set on guitar. <laughs> Watch it happen. I'm like, this is insane. Well, you don't want to hear the other side of that, right? How smart he is. Yeah. So, we, so this is great. The, the Watt brothers, I think Maddie, Maddie was there, the Watt brothers, there was like 20 of us. We would go out to the drive on beach in Long Island to drive the four-wheel drive bus, uh, drive the bus. <laughs> we, would, we would drive on the beach and we would have Fourth of July party. We brought like, you can't get away with it now. Right, but, no way. So Jersey guys, Donnie Demon, I think was in town. Uh, we all went going there. We would like bonfires. So they have fireworks. So they spend like, no joke, 45 minutes laying out all the fireworks. Maddie Pasta's fucking... Went out, out there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so we're all waiting, right? So they light the fucking they light the fucking fireworks. They light it backwards. They do the finale. <laughs> <laughs> First, boom, 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 boom. Everyone's like, yo, and it goes down to the <laughs> back. No, like they lit the whole shit backwards. It was That's so awesome. Awesome. everyone was so fucking zooted and fucked yeah. up doing fireworks in the beach. Yeah, of course. Oh. God, dude, <laughs> I'm like, yo, he's like, we lit it backwards. I'm like, what? How do you do that? <laughs> How do you do oh, that? Oh, uh, Matty Pasta, man. So funny times, dude. Funny yeah, times. man. Uh, yeah. Fucking shit. But, uh, <laughs> shit, bro. But listen, yeah. listen I, I appreciate when I asked you, I was like, I didn't know if you were going to say, nah, I'm busy or whatever, but I appreciate you coming on here, man. Seriously. Well, yeah. I, I mean, listen, I, yeah, I'm fucking, this was a crazy week. The only reason why I couldn't do it last night was because. I know. I know. Yeah, I, I don't say everything. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we did it, man. It's, I'm glad that, uh, listen, what you're doing is, is, is important. You know, people, and I, I, I was one to kind of never really pay attention to type of videos and podcasts, but the last two years, yeah, I've been really, I've been watching some of yours. I've been watching yeah. some some of these type of shows, and I really think it's awesome because yeah. it's just being in traffic for yeah. now. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, bro, I did it for, I was doing it for, I did it for like six years, and then I, I, I kind of felt burnt out because I was putting too much pressure on myself. Yeah. I was doing it every week, and before COVID, oh. I would only do it audio. So I would like set up with fucking people and I would leave work and then hopefully the place that we meet isn't loud. Like I did one with Paulie Sciatera in, in a diner and we're right next to the kitchen. All you hear is silverware and dishes clanging around. <laughs> I did one with Walter from fucking Quicksand. Me and John Lamarcky at Candiria. We go and, and Walter's like, yeah, we'll meet up at this, some juice spot. We set up and there's a blender going off every 30 seconds. But we he would pick... A fucking juice. A spot. juice spot, of course. But I did it for like six years, and then I just, I just got burnt out a little bit, and then I was like, you know what? So I put an end to it, and in the moment when I did the last episode, I, I, I felt like I was done. And then, like two years later, I'm like, you know what? You know, it's also because, I, bro, I felt, I'm a fucking idiot, but I just wrote a book, dude. It's not even about me. what? Me. What book? About you? What? For, oh, you did? What's it? Really? Oh yeah. shit. Yeah, it's, right. it's with the editor right now. My editor is a friend of my, it's my friend's father-in-law. I had no idea. 
His name is Patrick Labruto. Is the is the editor? He edited the stand, <laughs> the, the the stand and Pet Cemetery. He edited. He edited Dean Koontz books, like legit, dude. So I just it's gonna get cut down like crazy. But I wrote seven hundred and fifty two fucking pages. Really? Wow. So you, I guess that's that's pretty interesting. Is there a title yet or no? Relatively unscathed. It's pretty cool. Relatively, because no one ever said I was normal. But you know. <laughs> no, no, really? <laughs> yeah, no fucking figure. But oh, yeah, I need like a subtitle, like I don't know, Life and Times of a fucking Brooklyn jerk off or something. Cool. Like but I need like something like that. But yeah, man, it was just because I, I put out if you go back in the archive, it's not on video, but it's 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 episodes 49 and 51. For some weird reason, I just I was doing it in my phone. I just basically Everything good, bad, tragic, fucked up, everything. I just spilled everything. And wow. people were like, dude, that should be a fucking movie. That should be a fucking book. Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, great. Because then I was like, next episode is episode 50. It was like with the sick of it all guys at the studio. I'm like, wow. ah, yeah, yeah, whatever. And then people hit me up. They're like, yo, I want to know more about this, 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 and this. So I put out episode 51, which is Jimmy Ferrari, Life and Times, part two. And wow. then... No joke, a little bit over a year ago, I woke up, like, the second thought in my head. I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to write a book. Coming from somebody who used to have his sister do fucking my book. It work. Yeah, crazy. So, but it took me one year and one one year and one year week to write the whole thing. Yo, that's dope. Congratulations, man. I'm looking forward to checking it out. I didn't yeah, know. man. Yeah. That's There's, dope. like, a little group on Facebook and shit, you know, whatever. But but it's 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 in the, it goes through five different phases of editing and shit. So it's going to be a little bit, but everything that's done legit takes a little bit of time. So when is that, when is that going to come out? You think? You uh, hopefully within the, it would be nice if it came out within a year. Awesome, man. Good to know. Yeah. Good we're going to shop, we're going to shop it to publishers and shit. Like, you know, like I could talk to fucking Howie, you know, I could, you know, yeah, his Howie. book is coming out. The most interesting man alive. Oh my God. Yo, did you, did you catch any wind of this country record? Of course I did. I was I was I was in fuck I was in generation and he's like, oh you know, he asked me for Chris Bridge Nine's number. I'm like, yeah, I have his number. So I can't I'm like, how do you not have his number? AF has been on Bridge Nine how many different times? So I was like, yeah, here's his number. It's like, oh maybe Chris will put it out for me. And he's like, here, he's like, here, take my phone. He's like, push the button, sounds come out. I was like, <laughs> so, so I'm like, of course what you do. No, I'm walking around Generation listening to the Vinny Stigma Country album. And you know what's awesome? It's fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. It's yeah. That's, awesome. that's, uh, you know, that, I'm, listen, you know, our, I'm sure, I mean, I, we, I wouldn't expect someone like you who's around, like, this world to be normal. And I'm sure, like, there's a lot of shit in that book that people don't know. No. That, that you probably needed to get out. Yeah. Probably. Bro, I'm lucky to be alive, dude. So, so I don't even know if you want to tell me now. It's probably a lot, but like, can you tell me a little bit about like one thing that happened? That, you know, like I maybe I don't know. Sure. Um, tell me. I, I'll fucking tell you. Because um, it's all in the book anyway. A well, lot. Give me a, little, give me a little cliff note. A lot of names. It was the most important thing besides writing the whole thing. It's very important that a lot of names were changed. I had to for a lot of different reasons. Okay. Uh, family members, a lot of fucking shit. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I'll put it out there because I actually said this in the podcast episode 49, if you want to go way back in the archives. Yeah. Yeah. My stepfather, I won't mention any names, was one of these guys. Okay. okay. Yeah. My house was raided by the feds where I lived in Howard Beach, raided, ra ra you know, yeah. did time the whole fucking thing, running an illegal enterprise, the whole fucking deal. Yeah. Found 85 grand in cash and a nine millimeter in the house. He got fucking anything, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll put out like the fucking, the heavy fucking shit, bro. Like I, I, but on my birthday coming up, September 5th, on my 49th birthday, I'll have 10 years sober, right? right. So, so I was, I had six years and then I went off the fucking deep end for like three and a half years. And wow. then, um, and then I, I got my shit together. But one of the main reasons, I look back on it now, it's like, you know, did you really handle it like I was supposed to? Probably not in hindsight, but it is what it fucking is. But it's like the death of my mother, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's like people, like people know and shit like that. And I tell this story all the time, but it's like, I, 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 I'm, gonna, I'm just going to cut to the chase. I'm just going to ask you a fucking question and just give me a second to formulate it. Um, yeah. All right. My mother passed away in, in August of 2011. Yeah. My stepfather was conveniently down in Florida. All right. 
Mm -hmm. Um, there's a lot that goes on with this, but I have to ask you a question because I asked whoever I tell the story to, I ask them the same question. Right. If you were going to shoot yourself in the head, where would you put the gun? There's usually three spots that people say. It's either here. Yep. Here. Yep. Or here. Those are the three. Right. Now, my, <laughs> mother, my, my, my mother's on the paperwork, my mother's cause of death on there says self-inflicted gunshot wound. Hmm. Right? But there's red flags all over the place. Why was my mother's entry wound at the 530 position behind her right ear? Bingo. Yeah. Yeah, well, listen. Yeah, I mean... This, 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 you want a cliff note? Yeah, yeah, a fucking cliff yeah note. I, I think, you know... Uh, you know, I, I think that... It's yeah. crazy. You know what's crazy, Jimmy? Because you're 40, and I'm not taking anything away from your story. 48. I'm not 48. taking anything away from your story at all, but I feel like a lot of guys my age and your age with family from Brooklyn... Our families were probably all either trying to kill each other or fucking yeah. because I feel like my 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 <laughs> my my, my uh, family member's house was raided and stuff and a lot of stuff and yeah witness protection stuff like that. Like I yeah. know, I think in New York, I think, and I'm not saying I'm anywhere near like I had experience like you did, but I think that unfortunately a lot of people like that like you or people we know were really involved with some real fucked up shit growing up and yeah. when it was so our, our family members like were caught up in that and and i uh, having your stepmom your, your mom was was shot with that yeah that it brings it to another level because i feel like the, yeah. the, the gangster mobster shit was very 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 widespread for guys yes. my age and your age and older yeah um I give you credit. I don't want. I'm not going to say what I want to say on the air on the on this book, but I give you a lot of credit for actually doing it. And yeah. uh, I understand why you have to change names. But yeah. oh yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I'm sorry that you had to go through that. That's that's yeah. tough. That's yeah, tough. Man. Yeah. Because that's that's something that would not resonate too good with me. And listen, man, no. I think I think a lot of our, our 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 baggage and the shit that fucks our heads up is the shit that we live through, and we think we're okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. We think we're okay with it, you know, sure. and we're not. So I credit you for actually trying to tackle that. Much respect to you, bro. I Thank do. you, man. Yeah, and I mean, I, you know, I, 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 I can't actually. I, I'm look, I look forward to checking the book out. You know. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I mean, it'll when, when it comes out. Hopefully, a publishing company will 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 put it out. If not, then I'll go through an independent or I'll self publish it. Whatever it is, but you know, it is what it is. And and it's just crazy that when I put that last fucking period on that last sentence, seven hundred and fifty two pages later, I was just like. I can't fucking believe that I just did that. Mm, like, I yeah. used to have my sister do my book reports in fucking elementary school. I just wrote a book. It's like, that doesn't even make sense to me. Yeah. I, I no. really, uh, you know, I, I think that uh, what, you do, what, you, what you're doing is fucking, is, is actually uh, very, very important. You know? Yeah. So I can't yeah. wait to check it out, man. I hope that, yeah. uh, hope that everything comes out as smooth as you want. Yeah, you know? me too. I'll throw you a copy when I get them. I'll throw you a copy. I'll throw you a fucking two, three copies. Hey, take my teeth. I was. Yeah. Uh, listen, I, I, I think. Uh, hey, maybe one of the maybe the tattoo convention next year. You can come come over there and do something with it. You know? Hey, listen. Give me the green light. I'm there. I'm easy, yeah. bro. You want to come in this year? You're good. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I appreciate it. I'm easy. I don't like to step on no toes. I try not to bother anybody. And no, I try no. just fucking. Yeah, you good, bro. You good, bro. You good. All right. Well, good. Awesome. Glad to hear it. And uh, yeah, this was fucking cool, bro. I never had a long conversation like this with you. Like, like, yeah, at the you know, down at EVR, a few minutes here and there. But well, I never sit still that long. <laughs> I know. Yeah, neither do I. Neither do I. That's why I actually like doing this shit. Like, I've spoken to a lot of people that, as a little kid, fourteen years old, fifteen years old, looked up to. It's like I was, you know, me and Howie Abrams and like Lou Sick of It All were bullshitting for three hours today. It's like I used to look up to Lou Sick of It All. Now it's like, hey, what's going on, Lou? How you doing? Like, you know what I mean? It's just. Oh. It's that's that's what's that's what's great about this thing that we yeah. become friends with like you know people that maybe we kind of like looked at as like our, our, like our our like our focus of our out and then be, and you know that's the thing about hardcore and punk is that they're just like us right we're yeah. all just trying to live our lives and and get by and much respect to old sick but old guys I mean even yeah. though you know uh, listen what these guys bands like that if you think about it 
Nobody, there'll never be bands like that again. There'll be never. no sick balls. There'll be no Gnostic fronts. There'll never. be no bad balls. Never. There'll be no, these bands that come out, they won't last seven, eight years. You know, a, a very few will be able to stand the test of time. Yeah. Um, mm, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's like, who do you got? It's like, yeah, you got a Gnostic front, you got Mad Bull, you got Sick of It All. You have terrorists still going. You know what I mean? Like, you know, but there's, there's only a, there's only kind of like a handful, pretty much, that are. And, and it's really wild, man. I mean, there's a lot of good bands, but how many really last? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one saying. of my favorites, like Wisdom and Chains. Like, I want that. I want, you know, like, fuck, I love that fucking band. Shout no, that band fucking... is one of my favorite bands. I remember when I first started Chasing the Dragon, I was yeah. like, I talked to Richie a lot, you know. Yeah. I'm in the I'm in the pizza text. Not that I even fucking really talk about pizza, but like Mitz, Armand from Sick with All. Yeah. He was there today. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. So, no, you know, was it's, it, you know, listen, one thing was amazing was that when I, when I did the park show, um, I had to ask bands to play, and there was, you know, two bands that asked to play that they didn't want to play until they were vaccinated. But whatever, I mean, it's fine. But then I asked Wisdom and Chains to play, and they were like, "Yo, we'll do it." And then just seeing Joe on stage, there's a picture of Joe on stage that one, but it's like just the crowd in Tompkins Square Park. Yeah, yeah. I swear to God, if that if Joe if he doesn't if Joe he doesn't have that framed in his house, I'd be swear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that shit was so amazing dude I, I really think like those guys and they came out and and it was just a beautiful those, I have much respect for those guys for that reason Richie's a very Richie's a, Richie's a very smart guy and, and Richie he, is super smart and he's the biggest ball buster oh I know Yo, hilarious he, he's know. fucking hilarious he's 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 good man I, I I gotta say uh you know, I went when he's he's an old school, genuine soul man. Much yeah. respect to all those guys. There's so many good people, so many good people everywhere. Yeah, we're really, we're really lucky to to have experience what we are. That's all. Sure. You know? yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Cool. So, but uh, yeah, good talking, dude. So, I yeah. guess um, let me. When are you gonna put this on? A couple of days. Yeah, I'm gonna send this off to my guy. Like, hopefully, hopefully, I'll have it by tomorrow. If I get it, if I get it back tomorrow, I'll put it right up as soon as I get it back. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. man. Let's uh. Let's, uh, you know, if you ever need me to help you get a guest for the show that you don't really have, you don't know too well, let me know. I'll help you out, you know? All right. I appreciate that. What I yeah, really I wanted to do, what I really wanted to do, it's going to be a little dicey, I guess, but um, I wanted to have Eddie's, Eddie's family would be involved. I, I mean, I know it's, a lot of people say, you know, a lot of things should have been done while he was still alive. And I, and I, and I completely understand that. But what I was looking to do is throw a little something at like Lucky Thirteen, and uh, and all of the proceeds will go to Eddie's family, who will be there. You know what I mean? Like, I don't think I don't think that's. Uh, I think I wouldn't. It doesn't to have that. to be insane. Like, like for instance, like shout out to fucking Jimmy G. Like I did this. I did the veterans benefit. Murphy's Law played for nothing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that was huge. You know, and the second veterans benefit, fucking Leeway played. That was like a full circle moment for me, bro. I had a shit eating grin on that stage while they were playing. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's you awesome. know, it was, it was a fucking amazing feeling. And every time, like, like the first one, I pulled in like five grand in cash, and I took a picture wow. of it. I took a picture of it, and then I took a picture of the cashier's check, and then I took a picture of me giving it to the combat wounded veterans in the VA. So it's all fucking transparent. So that's why I would like Eddie's sisters involved. Well, not involved, but there. So right. whatever comes in the door, I have raffles, donation buckets, whatever, and just just try to help them out because regardless, you know, Eddie's gone. But yeah, he's still gonna get wrapped up with fucking bills and shit. Yeah, no, man. I think what you're doing, don't you know? I don't know, like what people's, you know, people could say a lot what they want. You know, what's funny. Old people that say things don't do anything. So just know that. Right. That just know that guys like you, guys like me, when you're when we're the ones doing something, if you don't fucking do nothing, put your money where your mouth is. You're doing good stuff. So, right. and if you need help with that, let me know. I mean, you know, timing wise, I I always feel like that's important to like figure out a good time wise. I don't think sometimes rushing it is not the best thing to do, right. in my opinion. Like yeah. make sure because sometimes you rush it, you kind of think, oh, I should have did this. Just like right. give, give yourself time. Don't. I have a, I have a tentative date. I want to do a Sunday matinee style. Um, oh, awesome. Um, June 23rd. Oh, that's good time. That's good yeah, time. there's time, but it's also kind of weird because I know that for bands that, that that's festival season. Oh, uh, yeah. 
you know what right. I'm saying? That's summertime, yeah. Europe, and all that stuff. What's that? You to find it's, out. You know, send some text out. Just ask. Yeah. Uh, Gallo, you're right. Gallo and the guys, they start, they go on tour and they, they leave in June to go like travel. They're playing the bold punk rock bowling. And they're gone. But like, I would just start, you know, don't just send out texts and just yeah. find out because you definitely don't want to like, if you got to wait a little longer. I mean, right. I, yeah. I, honestly, it could be like six months. Right. The, I know you want, I know it's in your heart. You want to do it now because it's more, it's like, it's still like fresh emotion, but like yeah. sometimes you get more, for, more for your efforts. If you just yeah. wait a little longer, just my right. advice. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes don't, don't feel like you, I don't think really you have to rush at it, but either way, if right. you need help, like with contacting somebody for that, let me know. You know, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, whatever. Appreciate I mean, you don't, you have to I, 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 might, I might actually take you up on that since you threw it out there. So yeah, I don't, I mean, I, <laughs> listen, I, 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 I love Eddie. I have nothing but love and respect for Eddie Leeway. So I, I yeah. would definitely do what I could to definitely connect the dots. Right. I appreciate that. For right. real. Big yeah. time. Much yeah. respect, brother. Of course you got it, man. You got yeah. it. Yeah. Right. Very right. cool. On that note, I won't hold you hostage anymore. But yeah. uh, this, this was awesome. I had no idea how long we were going to go, but this was fucking great, dude. Yeah, how long did we go? Um, I don't know. I don't know. An hour and a half or some shit. A little more. Know. Good, man. Yeah. If, you, if you want to do it again one day, you let me know. If something fresh is happening, you know? Well, you have an open door, bro. You want, you want to fucking talk about whatever, we'll do it. You just maybe like, maybe, no. maybe we'll get close to the tattoo convention or something like that. We'll do something. 100%. Like that. I would All love right. to. All right. Awesome. All, All right. right. So let me know what's up, brother. Good talking to you. I will. Absolutely. You too. Be safe, All brother. Right. All right, brother. Peace. Now, how do I get out of here? <laughs> just, just, just press end or X out or some shit. All right, bro. Have a good night. Right. I'll fucking talk to you later, brother. Support black and blue. Got it, baby. Later.